seconds, just a panel. Yes, I do. Oh, hello, Yahuazabo, Elohe, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. All praises to Yahuwah, Lord of the heavenly armies, Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May we give thanks to you, Abba Yahuwah, for bringing us all here together in fellowship and in harmony and in shalom. May we give thanks for us arriving to this moment in safety. In these days and dark hours, may we search for your light together. May your Ruach HaKodesh be revealed to us today. May you put your hands and your word within our mores and may your word speak to us through them. May everything be blessed in our families, each and every head of household here today. May our children be guarded over by your Malachim. May they be defended against the wicked devices of the evil ones. And may we continue to be a righteous example to our Mishpaka, to our tribes, and to the nations of the earth, so that all things are blessed through the seed of Abraham. May all things that we do today be for your glory and your esteem, and may we seek your face in a time, and may you hear our prayers once again from the lens of our captivity. In the midst of these days where our enemy seeks to destroy us, may you make us strong. May you hear our voices, and may, and may, the, doubt, may, and may the clouds and the thunder and the ground shake amongst our enemies that are seeking to shed innocent blood amongst our people. All praises are to you, O Abba Yahuwah. May this night bring to us and may this word fall on anybody and whoever is seeking or searching for something, may something through this lesson tonight touch them and reach all of us and take us to the places that we are intended to be so that we continue to understand who we are, why we are, where we are, and what it is we are intended to be. All praises are unto you. Baruch Atah Yahuwah, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, I'm not going to be before my brothers too long, especially if y'all don't talk to me, but uh, I'm sure the most I put his word in you as such as he placed in me. So I um, got a question. What kind of party are you throwing? That's the question. What kind of party are you throwing? Um, start that off, I want to go to the book of uh, Michelet, commonly called Proverbs, chapter 23. <clears throat> Michelet, commonly called Proverbs, chapter 23, and we're going to start at verse 17. And it reads, let not your heart envy sinners, but be in the fear of Yahuwah all the day long. For surely there is an end, and your expectation shall not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and guide your heart in the way. Be not among the wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto your father that begot you, and despise not your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begets a wise child shall have faith, likely, shall have joy of him. Your father and your mother shall be glad, and she that bore you shall rejoice. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lies in wait as for a prey, and increases then the transgressions amongst men. Hallelujah. <clears throat> um, well, I'll ask first. Uh, so does anybody see anything there first before we go speak about these women? Still about the party, though. If not, we can move forward. Uh, Mama Schley, open arm. Which proverb was that? I apologize. Uh, little bar, uh, 23. Little bar. Little bar. So that's uh, Miss Schley, Proverbs 23. We just read from 17 to 28. 
seventeen to twenty eight. Uh, nobody see. Nobody has any hands up on that. We'll go to the uh, shot Shama. What up, King? It's going, it's going. I praise to the Most High. Can you hear me? Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um. You know. Um. Verse seventeen stuck out to me. I'm just gonna read it again. Let not thy heart envy sinners, but thou in the fear of Yah all the day long. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we see, you know, people, you know, they're operating in sin and they seem like, you know, they're getting away, they're benefiting, you know, whether it be riches or whether it be um, power or respect, you know, and they're gaining those things from a, a sinful life. You know, sometimes they're looking at that, you say, I'm doing it the right way. And I'm nowhere near where they're at, you know, so you can't be envy of them because, you know, the most high is going to bring everything into judgment at the end, you know, so how you. Okay, okay, that's a, that's a great point. That's one of the scripts I also go to. Let not your heart envy sinners. Um, go ahead, Jay. Shalom, family. Um, so while I was reading it, I don't. Well, mine's maybe a little different, um, coming out the stones a little bit, but it's it's a comma after sinners, and it's almost it almost reads like, let you, like, just don't envy the sinners, right? But like envy the people who worship the Creator all the time, not envy as a way like you know kill them or like super jealous, but like the definition of envy is um, like aroused. By some by someone else's possessions or their qualities. That's the envy. That's what envy means. So it's like don't envy them for, don't envy the sinners and what they got going on, but envy the people who like praising the most high, like look towards them in a way. Okay, okay. So for 17, let not your heart envy sinners, but be in the fear. So uh, I'm awake, but it's talking about the aspect of your heart, right? And if your heart envies sinners, then where is that going to lead your body? As opposed to being the fear of Yah all day long, what is he telling to be in the fear of Yah all day long? It's talking about your heart being in the fear of the Creator all day long, right? Because there, you surely have an end, you have an expectation. <clears throat> Now it says, be wise and guide your heart. Be not among the wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh, drunkards and gluttons. So if you envy them, sooner than later, you will then become a part of them because envy is to want what somebody else has, right? So as, as Adon said, you should be not necessarily envying, but as the uh, Tehillah says, to mark the perfect man. Then as you go down, I'm going to um, touch on verse... 23, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall rejoice greatly. And he that begets a wise child shall have joy of him. Then verse 26, my son, give me your heart and let not your eyes observe and let your eyes observe my ways. And then it speaks on the whore. So let's go look at the whore real quick and then we're going to... Uh, Tie some things together. Let's go to Mishalay 7. So remember what he told you to buy and what he told you not to do. So Mishalay 7. And we're going to start at verse 6. Uh, if I could have somebody read from verse 6 to. Um, 27. I know that's a lot. Y'all can break it up if you need to. I can read, my Lord. Toda Rabaki. I mean, uh, Mishle, Perek Sheva, chapter 7, verse 6, verse 6. Hallelujah. For at the window of my house, I look forth through my lattice, and behold, and I beheld among the thoughtless ones. I discern among the youths a young man, void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening of the day, in the blackness of night, 
darkness. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a zona or a harlot, and really of heart. She is riotous and rebellious. Her feet abide not in her house. She is in the streets, now in the broad places, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an imprudent face, she said unto him, sacrifices of peace offerings were due from me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my couch with coverlets, with stripped clothes of yarn of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, alloy, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. For my husband is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He has taken the bag of money with him. He will come home at the full moon. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the blandishment, the blandishment of her lips, she enticed him away. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox that goeth to the slaughter, or as one in the fetters of the correction of the fool, till an arrow strike through his liver, as a bird hasten to the snare, and knoweth not at the cost of his life. Now therefore, O ye children, hearken unto me, to the words of my mouth, let not thy heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, a mighty host are, are all her slain. Her house is the way to the netherworld of Sheol, going down to the chambers of death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see a, a very distinct contrast, right? So just to kind of tie it in, um, I was watching a show, right? Called uh, Lock and Key on uh, Netflix. And the reason why I, I asked you, what kind of party are you throwing? Because it was a part where um, he was a spirit, right? So he kind of went through a door, so on and so forth. And he became in spirit form. And he went to go see somebody in order to um, deceive them, right? So long story short, the uh, the elder that he went to go deceived, he was like, "You may be, you may be uh, fooling those who can't see you, but in this world we can see you, and we see the parasite that is attached to your spine, right? So a parasite, of course, needs a host." That's why the question is, what kind of party are you throwing? Because it's not parasites that are being attached to you, but there are spirits being attached to you. So which ones have you allowed and are you hosting inside of your vessel? Right. So when you go back to Michelet 23, you see some of the <clears throat> some of the uh Spirits that the Most High says to send an invitation to. Right. So 23. Chapter 23, Michelet. 17. Uh, the fear of Yahuwah is a Ruach. Verse 23. Spirit of truth is a Ruach. Kokma, Torah, Mina, or wisdom, instruction, and understanding. All of these, and then verse 24 says, the righteous, the father of the righteous. So is righteousness. So it's telling you all of the different spirits or um, guests that you should be allowing into your vessel. And it's starting with verse 17, which is why that was key. It said, let not your heart begin to envy because as we're about to see is it's the heart
the heart is where it all starts. The spirit doesn't come for no reason, but it's from the heart, which leads to something else, which then allows or stamps the invitation, right? So your heart is the invitation and something else is the stamp, which allows it to then be set. So in chapter 23, you see those which you should have. When you go back to chapter seven in the book of Michelet, you see some of the attributes that he says that that young man had, right? Outside of being a boy or not all. He also said he was naive. He lacked understanding. And he was in foolishness. So these things that were in him made him straight off the path and said that by her words, right? Based on what was in him, he diverted off of his path. He diverted off of his path into the strange woman, which says death and destruction, so on and so forth. But it was it was his heart and what was in him that allowed his actions to go, right? So I want to give some examples. But before I give some examples, uh, does anybody have any comments or questions starting off? You are the host. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go to the book of uh, First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter thirteen. And Moray. Yes, sir. While, while we while we going there, the First Samuel thirteen. Uh, one thing I was thinking about as well, especially reading Mishlei seven, knowing that that is um, a vice that a, a lot of men struggle with, right? Having that that mishmayot, that that discipline, not to um, fall into this trap, but Scriptorial, I was thinking about the advice that um, that um, Bilam gave to Balak, you know, to hey, I can't curse these people, but I can show you how they can curse themselves, right? And they sent in those women from Baal Peor, BP, and, and we felt lusting. Um, so I, I just pray that most high will continue to give us that strength to to really overcome this type of ruach that lustful ruach especially when it comes to um just the provocativeness of the society what they promote what they feed to our daughters with a lot of them embrace and we say you know by that truth you know we have to be able to speak out against that but not only speak out allow our actions as the brother um uh, maria was saying in this tefillah be be an, an example of 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 looking to that rock that we was hewn from so uh i just wanted to kind of bring up bp because i know that was a, a very rough blow for us in our history when we felt less than after those women hey okay because it looks so good okay. um it's okay you lot and then uh, Jay. Shalom once again, Ms. Bittar, all praises to the Most High for the word being given tonight. Um, it's the personal observation that I had uh, during this week, uh, the beginning of this week, or maybe it was last week. And I know. Can you hear me? Okay, we can now. Hey, we can hear you now. You went kind of mute. Oh, okay. Um, so I noticed that she has all of this stuff that, as 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 uh, Adon was just saying about the way they uh, culture, they culturize our women, for lack of a better term into being dressing and looking like harlots. Now, mind you, I looked past all of the exterior, uh, her, her, what she was wearing, and I still saw something that I really liked in her. But then I began to say to myself, women have power to make fools of men. 
women have power to make fool of men. So as Adon was just saying, we we should, and even as the lesson is saying, guard your heart because there are seducing spirits, as you said in the program uh, that you were watching. There are seducing spirits out here that attach themselves. Which party are they? Are you given? And we see these women who are walking around dressed very pro provocatively. I mean, is is nothing for women today to show their front parts, show their back parts. I mean, you don't. It doesn't leave much to the imagination. But long story short, is I had to remind myself, and I had to keep reminding myself, even in my prayer life, that a, an old man can be a fool, a young man can be a fool, and women do have the power to make fools of us based on our appetite for those things. So guard your heart, brothers, guard your eyes. <clears throat> I find myself at work a lot of times looking away because women are dressed so pro provocatively. I find myself going the long way around to not observe what is enticing to my eyes so that I, I do my best to keep my mind and my heart <clears throat> on the most high uh, words in the way I'm supposed to behave. I yield. Hey, thanks, Ola Zachary. Uh, Jay? Um, so I was gonna say with the, the woman who was enticing the, the man, um, what, would you think that was speaking a little bit um, in allegory? Like she was making things smell like with cinnamon and almost like the, the man was chasing after sin and the sin was kind of like sweet in a way or it was dressed up real nice and he, just, he fell for the trap going, going towards it instead of only, not, not that it's wrong, but um, not fully a woman, but looking at it from like an allegor allegorical standpoint. Hey, hey, um, um, absolutely, Adon. So that he's so mostly uh, like Torah uh, wisdom understanding. Most of these are given um, the uh, feminine marker, right? Just for, for lack of a better way to say it. So this is uh, a metaphor speaking of um, seducing doctrines, seducing spirits, and how it can look so good, right? The life can look so good and they make it look good. So then as you come, then you are destroyed. So absolutely, it's not just about women physically, uh, but it's about the doctrine. All right. Okay. Um, uh, so we were going to uh, First Samuel, or First Samuel, chapter 13. Um, and I just want to give a couple um, examples uh, and ask y'all a couple questions. So first, Shemuel, Shemuel Aleph, 13, verses 11 through 14. And it reads, oh, if you're going to read, I'll keep that. Right. First, right. I'm sorry, first Samuel, what? Uh, 13, starting at verse 11. And Shemuel said, what have you done? And Shaul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you came not within the days appointed and that the Philistine gathered themselves together at Mekmat. Therefore said I, the Philistine will come down now upon me to Gilgal and I have not made supplication unto Yah. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. And Shemuel said to Shaul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of Yah your Elohim, which he commanded you. For now would Yah have established your kingdom unto upon Yisrael forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Yahuwah has sought him a man after his own heart, and Yah has commanded him to be captain over his people because you have not 
kept that which Yah commanded you. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, chapter 16. Wait, but before we go there, okay, um, what do you mean it was all a test, Aki? And why did he fail? I mean, I just go by that last statement, and I think that's why we have to be extremely careful to stay away from sin. He mentioned, wow, verse 13, and Shemuel said to Shaul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of Yah, thy power, which he commanded thee. For now, with Yahuwah, have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. If he would have stayed the course, waited patiently, because sometimes we do get real impatient. And I think it's human nature. And it's, we have to constantly remind ourselves that the, the most high is in control, right? Because Shemuel was eventually going to come, right? And Saul, he was out of uh, emotion, zeal, but it, it wasn't zeal based on the commandment of Yah. He kind of allowed his own spirit and leaning on his own understanding to make the choice that he made. And I said it, it was a test because if he would have just waited patiently, for Shemuel to come, even though things were, his back was against the wall and things were really looking against him. Um, man, like I said, his kingdom would have been established forever, but we know, we know the rest of the history. Hey, hey, absolutely. That's how we're trying to tell people that, like you said, it was, David was prophesied of, but, <laughs> hmm. Shaul had a chance. He had a chance. Now, what was what was in his heart, right? What did he allow to uh, be in his heart that made him do that? Great question. Anybody? So, so yeah, um, if I remember correctly, um, he was he wanted to please his friends, and also he he had a lust for the material things, you know, cattle, I believe, you know, animals, yeah. So you know, I would say it was a greed, and then there was the pressure to please men, you know, to get the respect from men. Are you? Okay, um, okay, uh, but the incident that you're talking about is in chapter 15, um, where he doesn't kill uh, all of the Amalekites, right? And that's when he kept all the uh, good sheep and good oxen and so on and so forth to say he was going to sacrifice to the creator. But here you see that it was, it was mainly fear, right? He said that I saw the people scattered away from me and I saw that you didn't come yet. So based on the fear that was in my heart, this is what I quote unquote forced myself to do. So based on based on what is seated on our leg, right? On our mind and on our hearts, based what's seated upon that, that's gonna dictate actions. Okay, lack of patience. So because of these things, he allowed himself to transgress. More, may I? Yes, sir. Of course. Because when I read the history, I, I try to put myself um, just really from a realistic standpoint, right? And I think we've all been at a point where, where we didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? We didn't know what to do. Now, we know the right thing to do is to put our trust, that have the Emun Ashalemu that perfect trust in the almighty and not excusing his behavior, but just from being a man who experienced hardships and not knowing what to do. And sometimes leaning on, on, on their own understanding that I can, I can see 
how his intent really was trying to do right. It was wrong what he did because it wasn't his place to do the offering. It was definitely the place of Shemuel to do the offering. But do you see how someone in a situation like that, just us regular men, someone in a leadership position, whatever you may be, but can you see how we can fall short when when we really feel like we there's nowhere else to turn? Okay. Hey, yeah, I'm um I think that we will all be uh disingenuine things work, right? Or really not being honest with ourselves if if we continue continuously read these stories and then say oh well i would have did this here or i would have did this here right we have to put ourselves in the story but then that's why we have these stories in order to fall back on right so it's like i can see i can see uh malek shaul doing that right and his back against the wall but then i can see our forefather abraham and uh bear sheet 22 about to sacrifice his son and pretty much having the knife above his neck or you see uh places where our forefathers were in fear and you see places where our forefather was in faith so now we have a choice which goes back to which one are you going to allow to reside within you you see what i'm saying now excellent Toda. Toda Ruba. So we see uh, Shaul was moving off of the things that he had allowed to be in his his lead, right? But now I have a question. Well, let me read. Let me read. Uh, let's go to the book of First Shemuel, chapter sixteen. Shemuel, I left sixteen. We're gonna read verse one, and then we're gonna drop down real quick. And I got a question. Shemuel, I left. Shemuel, Rishon, sixteen, verse one. And Yahuwah said unto Shemuel, how long will you mourn for Shaul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Yisrael? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Yeshe, the Bet Halamik, uh, Halakami, exactly. For I have provided me a king among his sons. And I want to uh, drop down to verse 12. First hmm. Shemuel 16, 12. And he sent and brought him in. And now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And Yahuwah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Shemuel took the horn, the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Ruach Yahuwah came upon Dawid from that day forward. So Shemuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Ruach Yahuwah departed from Shaul and an evil Ruach from Yah troubled him. And Shaul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil Ruach from Elohim troubles you. Let our Lord now command your servants which are before you to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from Elohim is upon you, that he shall play with his hand and you shall be well. Now, I have a question. Uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier, right? As far as the host of the party. Um, in chapter... 13, the Most High said that he, uh, well, Shemuel said that the Most High is going to give the kingdom to one who is after his own heart, right? What's that? 11, uh, 13, 14. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Yah has sought a man after his own heart, and Yah has commanded him to be captain over his people, right? So he chose Dawid. Now, my question, question to the family here is, how is it that in chapter 13, the Most High knew that Dawi was a man after his own heart, but he didn't get the Ruach of Yah until chapter 16 when he was anointed. How does that happen? How are you a man after the heart of Yah without having the spirit of Yah? Jay? Like you said, uh, to start it off, you know, what party are you throwing? So I'm guessing if you're not the one throwing a party, it's like, which party are you, which parties are you attending? So the most high is looking at your heart the whole time. In a way. Hey. Right, so as the host, 
first he's he's dealing with the heart, the heart of the man, right? He said, I sought a man after my own heart. And then from the heart, what's in the heart, as we see, we see that Dawid is still taken after the, the, the sheep, so on and so forth, right? So he's doing the work based on what is in his heart. And then now the Most High gives him the Ruach, right? The, the spirit of Yah, because now he's being activated, right? So the spirit activates what was in your heart, thus allowing you to walk fully therein. So whatever it is, whatever is in your heart, <clears throat> you're going to act on that first. And then the Most High is going to give you a spirit that will allow you to keep on going in it. So if you if you have uh, envy in your heart, then you're going to act envious. Then the Most High is going to give you an en envious spirit, and then that's that's the way that you're going to continuously be. Right? It said that <clears throat> the Most High gave him his ruach. Okay, uh, more Kanaka. I just wanted to add to that other perspective that what you were saying with that, because when it says that he was a man after Yah's own heart, it's it's kind of like in colloquial terms, you could say, man, that's my kind of dude right there. You know what I'm saying? I could get with him. And because he saw how David carried himself, how he obeyed his law, statutes, command, what kind of shepherd he was, because he was a shepherd, because he was out there with them sheep. He was battling for the sheep. You know what I'm saying? Yah saw, saw those characteristics already in him. So it's like, what better place to put my Ruach than the only man that already acts like me? He don't even have my Ruach yet, but he acts just like me. So let me just seal him off, you know what I'm saying, to 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 solidify his place in me. I yield know at that point. Hallelujah. That, that, that word that you just used as far as sealing him up, right, or sealing him off. Now, you have officially been stamped that. Um, Adon Yermia. And then Shashima. No, I told our Mori um, Kanaki, that was spot on, spot on point. As you mentioned, but just with the shepherd, and we'll, we'll learn more in, in Dawid's history. How he mentioned that, you know, when that lion came or that bear came, how uh, he had no fear, you know, and how uh, he went after the lion and the bear to, to protect the shepherd, the sheep. And we're, we're known as the, the flock of the Most High, right? So for Dawid to have that type of spirit, over these, this creation, these animals that the Most High created, you know, who are the beasts are lower than men, man, how, let alone how, what type of spirit would he have when he's actually leading the people. But I just want to also just share a, a precept as well in Yirmiyahu 1710 to kind of answer your question as well, Mori Dawu, as far as how did the Most High know it was in Dawi's heart. Um, 1710, Yirmiyahu said, I, Yahuwah, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So the creator, he knows what's really in our inner being. You know, we, we sometimes we can put on our show and, and put on a certain image on, on our outside, but he knows when we're genuine and when we're sincere. And Dawid had that, that spirit that, you know, once he put that Ruach Elohim upon, upon him, it was just took him to a whole nother level. So tell everybody. Hallelujah, because he has to test you before he seals you, right? Before he really sealed the covenant with, with Abraham after the uh, 10th try, he said, well, now I know. Now it's official. I already knew that you had a heart toward me when I told you what was going on with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So I already knew that then, but now as I'm testing you and testing your heart through all of the things that are dear to your heart, as I'm testing that, now, <clears throat> now I'm able to see. Okay, the heart is deceitful above all things, right? But as we read in uh, Mishalei 23, the, <clears throat> the teacher is saying to give your heart over to wisdom. So then that way you don't have to worry about it deceiving you because it's no longer in your control. You have fully submitted yourself over to the creator. So your mind, your heart, both leg, both of those, <clears throat> both of those have to be, okay, both of those have to be given to the creator. And you have to submit. Shashima. 
So uh, yeah, I just thought of a reference. Um, because we were talking about uh, you know, that we we know that he was a he was a shepherd, you know, for a period. And I believe Moshe was too. And the precept that I thought about was um uh, it's in Mishle, Mishle 12, chapter 12, verse 10. I'm gonna read it. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So, you know, I thought about, you know, a shepherd, you know, he has to look after the sheep, you know, and it says here in this precept, a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. So I thought that kind of tied in what we were just talking about, you know, as far as the heart. I yield. Okay. Okay. I'm at Tora, Tora Baki. Um, Go ahead, Yamiya. I see you, Aki. No, no, I was going to say truth. I, I like the, the reference the, the brother made. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. So we see here that <clears throat> the Most High saw what was in his heart. He tried him, and then he he sealed him. Same thing happened in revert. Well, the same thing on a parallel line with Melech Shaul. He tried him with the sacrifice with the uh, Nabi Shemuel, or the the prophet Samuel. He tried him with the uh, command to wipe out the Amalekites. After he tried him and saw what was in his heart was not only just fear, but also rebellion because of that fear. Because once again, even when you go to um, 1 Samuel 15, he's still talking about the people, right? And how the people wanted to do this and that. So his fear of the people allowed him to rebel against the creator. So now because you have rebelled, and because your heart is now being shown through your actions, now I'm going to give you a uh, ruach ra'a or an evil spirit in order to trouble you. I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you an evil spirit in order to trouble you because that's the way that you're walking. So now you have just been sealed in that, and that's the way that he continued to live for the rest of his being. Want to go to uh, Second Chronicles? Debri, how you mean? Bait. Uh, 26. All of this deals with the type of spirits that you allow to be within you. And then from there, your actions. And then you get the spirit. Let's go to Second Chronicles 26, start at verse 16. You want me to read it or you want to read it? Uh, let's talk about Keith. So, um, uh, Second Chronicles 26, 16 to 23. Verse, verse the day. Hallelujah. But when he was strong, up he did corrupt me and he trespassed against Yahweh his power for he went into the temple of Yah to burn incense upon the altar of incense and Azariah the Kohen went in after him and with him 80 Kohanim of Yah valiant men they withstood Uziah the king and said unto him it pertaineth not unto thee Uziah to burn incense unto Yah Kohanim the sons of Aharon that are consecrated, it pertaineth to burn incense. Go out the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thy honor from Jehovah thy power. Then Uziah was wroth, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the Kohanim, Zerat broke forth in his forehead before the Kohanim in the house of Yah, beside the altar of incense. And all the Kohanim looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in the forehead. They thrust him out quickly from thence, yea, himself made haste also to get out, because Yahuwah had smitten him. And Uziah was a leper until the day of his death, and dwelt in a house set apart for the leper, for he was cut off. Of Yah and Yotam, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now, the rest of the acts of Uziah, first and last, did Yishiyahu Hanevi, the son of Amos, write. 
So Uziah slept with his fathers and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the burial which belonged to the Melachim. For they said, and Yotan his son reigned in his stead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see, <clears throat> we see here, starting off at verse 16, it said that when he was strong, his heart was lifted up. So the first thing that <laughs> occurred after the Most High does something is his heart, which then uh, deceives him to thinking that he is bigger than what he is and goes into another lane, which does not pertain to him. But it all started because his heart was the host of pride and anger. So based on that, right, based on the heart and then his actions, uh, what plant do you touch or what do you eat? Um, what do you do or what can you eat, touch, or anything like that in order to get Sarah out? <clears throat> or leprosy? Yeah, I'm not familiar with you can eat or touch, but I always was taught that it's like a plague of um, uh, for, for doing, um, for tail bearing or to, to speaking rashly with your lips. Okay. Uh, Jay? Are you, are you like speaking to like actual vegetation? Um, okay. Like, um, uh, like, um, what's it called? Um, dang, I was just saying it in my head just in case. Um, uh, poison ivy. Um, are you never mind? I'll let you finish, more Not now, you get it. <laughs> now, you get it. I keep, I was about to ask, um, so poison ivy gets you, uh, Zyra Ot? No, no, it doesn't, not leprosy, no, okay, uh. Uh, Maury, Brew. Now nah, go ahead, Maury. So long. Shah. Um, can't you get it from touching the armadillo? Um, and I think you get it from touching the armadillo. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I never, I never check heard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely check that out. But as as far as scripturally, right? You don't see uh, Miriam touch, eat, anything like that. You don't see um, uh, Gehazi touch, eat, or anything like that that automatically made him break out. So would it be safe to say that um, Zara'at or leprosy is a spiritual disease? It is something that based on what is inside of you, right? Based on what is inside of you, something occurs and marks you. Something marks you. It pretty much cuts you off from Yah, which cuts you off from life. So based on death being in your heart, now you have a marker which literally cuts you away from the source of life. All based on what's in your heart. Which is going to cause you to do something in the physical. There's no way that you can have these things, uh, these ruach, these ruko, or these spirits inside of your heart, and they not make you move a certain way. So depending on who you invite inside of your temple, that's the way that you're going to move, and then that's eventually the way that you're going to be sealed. Let's go to uh, the book of Bamidbar, chapter 13. Come and call numbers. Chapter 13. Uh, Johan? Kind of don't. Something, I don't know why, but something just came to mind might be off a little bit, but um, 
when it came to, when it left the sea, and I'm trying to put it at the daytime. So you know we don't hear about left the sea at the daytime, but we got all these different disease and viruses out here, and I'm thinking that maybe the this is the new form of left the sea, all these disease and viruses out here that the most are putting on the people, not this Israel, but all the people because it. He did say Eagle Alaska that this is the whole duty of man, not just Israel, to follow the commandments. So man is out here wilding, out here doing all type of stuff against the Mosai. And the false reality is that, oh, that was just for the Jews or that was just for Israel. But the Mosai said this is the whole duty of man. And you see what man doing out here. With all this wickedness that's going on around here with the LBGT, all this different stuff that's going on out here. And you see all the, the diseases out here, all these virus. And it's like we getting all these different variants of COVID. COVID is still going on. I think the most I, I think I, these diseases and virus, I think the most I got his hands in it. Even though I know man probably created, but I think the most I got his hands in it because of the wickedness of mankind, what he's doing on this earth. And I yield. Okay. Okay. Um, and I agree uh, that a lot of what's going on has fell out of the hands of man who thought they who thought that they were in control. Like even when you get leprosy or Zaraat, right? It's nothing that the Kohen doesn't do anything but check on you to see whether it's gotten worse, whether it's gotten better, or whether it has stayed. Because it's something inside of you that you have to change in order for that to go away. All heart. Uh, but mid bar 13, start number 13. And Caleb, oh, to see if I can. And Caleb still the people. Lord Moshe and said, at once and possess it, we are able to overcome it. And that went up with them said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Read an evil report of the land which they had spied out unto the children of Israel saying, the land though which we have passed to spy it out, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw are in men of great stature. And we saw there the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came from the Nephilim, and we were in our sight grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. Okay, okay, Naki. Um, can you um continue all the way to chapter 14, 1 through 5, uh, and then uh drop down to verse 28. So 1 through 5 and then drop down 28 for my Okay. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. The children of Israel murmured against Moshe and against Aharon. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would that we had died in the land of Mizraim. Would we have died in this wilderness? And what for doth Yah bring us out into this land to fall by the sword? Our and our little, little ones will be a prey. Were it not better for us to return to Mizraim? They said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Mizraim. Moshe and Aharon fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Uh, can, I, can, can you drop down to 20, 28 to uh, 33? Okay. Verse 28. Say unto them, Live, Yahuwah. Surely as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, ye that have murmured against me, surely ye shall not come into the land concerning which I lifted up my hand, that I will make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Yefune. And Yehoshua, the son of Nun, the little ones that you said will be prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have rejected. For you, 
your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness and your children shall wander, shall be wanderers in the wilderness 40 years and shall bear your strains until your carcasses shall be consumed in the wilderness. Hey, hallelujah. So based off of what, based off of what was in your heart, now your seed has to bear the punishment of it. So because of the fear that was in your heart and the uh, lack of trust, the doubt, all of that that was in the uh, aspect of being a coward, all of that that was in your heart now, <clears throat> you spoke on it. And now you want to go back. So that's your action. And now you have been sealed. Now your fate has been sealed. And not only your fate, but now your children have to also bear that fate with you. Or they are being delayed in their fate because of you. All because of your heart. And for whatever reason, you can't <clears throat> seem to kick out those things that do not belong and invite and bring in those that which do belong. It's all on you. All right. Um, I want to go to uh, one more scripture. Uh, Yes, he are. Coming called Isaiah chapter 11. Can't be just one thing that we're after. Right. Louis Mislater says, wisdom is a principal thing, but with all that, get, get understanding. So that means that they are two different things. We should be inviting all of these different <clears throat> guests into our temples. That we may walk a certain way, right? Yes, you are Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 5. Yes, there. And there shall come forth a shoot out of the stock of Yeshai, and the twig shall grow forth out of his roots. And the Ruach of Yahweh shall rest upon him. Ruach of Kakma and Bina, Ruach of counsel and might, Ruach of knowledge, fear of Yah. And in his delight shall be in the fear. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither decide after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. Decide with equity, meek. He shall smite the land with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips, and slay the wicked. And the righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Hallelujah. So we see. Of course, you know, this is a passage that we all know, the uh, seven root coat of the uh, rod out of the stem of Jesse, or Yesha. So we see that there are seven that dwell within him. So that means that we, we also should be looking for all of those guests, right? So I got a question just to, to end it on a, on a practical note. So how do we get these things within us? How do we get these things within us? What's the first step? Tosi for don't hear me I'm thinking about Devarim 6-4, you know, and the Mosa basically saying, you know, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh, Hene, Yahweh, Chaz. You should love Yehoah thy power with all thy might, all thy heart, and all thy soul. And thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So just constantly having a mind on Yah, constantly having a mind on his Torah, studying within, you'll start to build up some of these characteristics that we're reading about in Yahoo 11. Torah. Hallelujah. Um, Jaquan? Yeah, I'm thinking about the uh, um that's just being mindful of you know who you really who you really belong to and 
doing your best to walk that straight, narrow path and keep your heart in, in the fight at all times. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sha? Ken, I would say, um, you know, humble yourself. You know, if you're in the wrong, you know, don't try to make excuses for it. You know, just ask the Father for forgiveness, you know, repent, and then, you know, take your punishment, whatever it is, and just try to do better. And then that's when the most high, you know, you open yourself up, you know, so he can, then he can begin to work with you. I yield. Mm. Okay. So how can a man be filled unless he first empties himself? So the first thing that we would all have to do, which I believe that a lot of us are still in the process of doing, is emptying ourselves of all that which is not of the creator. All of those uh, root code or spirits that we have <clears throat> invited into our beings, right? We first have to kick them out. Um, it's okay, you lot. Uh, shalom, Maury, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, the thing I was thinking of is, along with what you said is, we have to learn how to die daily. That means dying daily. That means dying daily to what we want to do. Now, I'm, I'm, that sounds very easily said. Uh, but the world puts so much pressure, downward pressure on us and tries to make us conform and live unto this life. But I was telling somebody uh, yesterday that there's in this time we're in, there's a dimension that's pushing against us, and we are the dimension pushing against, pushing back. So we know we're going to win. We won't win until we are fully dead unto ourselves and making with all of our heart, because I was meditating on this today at work, what truly does it mean to chase after you, Father, with all my heart? Because all of us, we didn't have a Samuel to train us or a Shem to train us in the things uh, that pertain to the Most High. And so we're kind of walking into this. And as we go, I can speak for myself, discarding that which we don't want to hold on to any longer because it's not profitable to us. So for me, I just say for me, I want to know what it truly means in my heart to die as well as run after seek, after desire, after thirst, after the most heart with all my heart. I yield. Okay. So emptying yourself, uh, Adon Yomi, I said, um, meditating on the word, speaking on the word day and night. Um, can we go to uh, Ecclesiastes? So kind of said, die to yourself daily. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4. Koheleth, commonly called Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, starting at verse 9 through verse 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two are better than one. They have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Have not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they have warm. How can one be warm alone? If man prevail against that is alone, shall withstand him. And threefold, threefold cord is not quickly broken. What verse are we going to again, Slockley? Ecclesiastes 
That's it. That's it, Aki. So there about. So one of the things that um as men that we continuously uh glance over is the necessity for brotherhood. Um none of this is done by ourselves. And for anybody to believe that they can do it, you are doing nothing but fooling yourself and setting yourself up for failure. So, uh, by yet yourself, I see you, Rocky. Can can Shalom, Maurice, Shalom, brothers, how y'all doing? Can you hear me pretty well? Can first and foremost, <clears> Torah <throat> about for this lesson. For Torah y'all for allowing this words to come upon your ruach. <laughs> now I see uh, the question. Now I finally got that understanding. But uh. One of the things I wanted to point out on my uh, Yemi I pointed out for me was uh, for those group posts that you pointed out, uh, testing is one of those things that can refine uh, those Ruachs that you should have or uh, trying to obtain to have. The Most High will actually test you to refine you, just like how Shaul was tested. But we see that example right there from our forefathers that uh, earlier was pointed out that he had failed that test. If he had passed and stayed uh, diligent on the course, he would have obtained treasures beyond his wildest dreams. So that was one of the things that uh, definitely caught my ear. And I was going to uh, actually add to that. Those seven Ruachs would allow you to deal with certain people in a certain manner. Because um, you're going to go through this walk of life and deal with certain people that you're going to have to have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, uh, you even though humility, meekness, all of those things, because you're going to come across different people to try to get them into this fold. So, Cain, that was definitely one of the things I was going to bring out. Uh, even dealing with your brothers, uh, whether it be blood, those that are in this walk, uh, those are certain things that will help refine those ruachs that were that the Most High is implying to you. So I yield on that. Okay. And that, and that was key as well, because even with the, the aspect of, like you said, dealing with your brothers. So what if you got the spirit of wisdom if you don't have the spirit of humility? So what if you got the spirit of knowledge and understanding if you don't have compassion? You got the spirit of a leader, but you don't have the spirit of uh, generosity. You can have certain spirits, but all of them are necessary. All of these different attributes, right? All of these different characteristics that the Most High has within him as a, a being that's supposed to resemble him, we should be having all of these characteristics within ourselves. So the only way to do that is to pinpoint what characteristics are needed and which ones are not needed, which does go back to... Uh, reading the word, which is a uh, mirror unto our spirits or a mirror unto our souls and seeing what is like the creator and what is not. And then having brothers who are able to check you when they see something that you didn't pinpoint in your mirror. But if you don't have that, then you are going to lean on your own understanding. It says there's victory in a multitude of counsel. If you walk in by yourself, how? How does that really work? So from the inside <clears throat> party that you're having, right? The hosting that you're doing inside with the spirits on the outside, you should be having brothers that also fit that same mold. Because what is in you usually is what you're going to flock to. Birds of a feather, we, we know the rest. So um, that's pretty much all I have for tonight. Tona Raba, all praise to the Most High. Yah, first and foremost, uh, Tona Raba for your attentiveness. Um, and uh, I'll open the floor. Moray. Tona Raba for that lesson. Definitely a great reminder for us to continue to build ourselves up before the Almighty, thank you for the reminder of humility, the reminder of generosity, 
reminder of being the the people that Yah created us to be. The Healing 24 mentioned and says, who shall ascend into the mountain of Elohim? Say he that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not sworn deceitfully and have not taken my name in vain. He shall ascend into the mountain of Elohim. So I pray that the Creator will not only be with us men on the line tonight, be with our families, those who are connected to us, and that we always walk in the truth of the Almighty. And as the brother mentioned earlier, be accountable for our mistakes because no man is perfect and without sin. And I pray that you'll continue to just be humble and continue to grow before the Almighty. Most I continue to bless you, Moray, and all the brothers on the line as we um, continue to build his kingdom on this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh told our Abad do uh most I continue to build you up as well. Like he you're uh definitely a mighty man against right now. Hallelujah. Um I don't Ryan. Yeah, shalom. Uh, yeah. I just want to say Toda Rabah for um it was an excellent lesson. I just wanted to um share, you know, what I got from it, you know, you know, what 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 spoke to me tonight. You know, when you speak of, you know you know, brotherhood and, you know, leaning on each other and, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, coming together as a unit, you know, and having, you know, you know, trusting, you know, so those of, you know, those of us, you know what I'm saying, that are in this walk together, you know, and me coming from the background that I come from or whatever, you know, I could say that, you know, you know, the streets sometimes teach something totally opposite. You know, the streets tell you, you know, you don't, you don't trust no man, you know, because you, you know I me, mean? it's wicked out there. You know, one of the first things that we have to do in order to get to this point where we can take on those those seven righteous root code is, you know, we have to come up out of the darkness of this world because many of that, you know, a lot of that baggage will hinder our growth moving forward, you know. And, you know, me talking to myself and sharing it with everybody up here, you know, this was an excellent lesson, you know, for a guy like me, you know what I mean, or a man like me, and understanding that, you know, I have to learn how to trust those that are entrusting and lead with the most high, you know, and, you know, I know every brother up here on this call tonight takes it serious about, you know, keeping the commandments of the most high and trying to live a life that is reflecting of what, what is pleasing before our supreme power. And, you know, that right there, you know, helps a lot with, you know, men that may come, men that may be coming from you know, backgrounds and, and from things of that nature ways. And, you know, you don't let, you don't, you know, you don't let men come to your house. You know, you don't, you don't let men mingle with your old lady. You know, you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you know, you don't trust people like that because, you know, trusting the wrong person may end up in your death. You know, it may end up in your robbery. It may, it may, it may end up in you suffering a, a very bad result, you know, but in this walk, we have to learn how to die to that, you know. You know, we want to learn how to die, you know, live, die, and be reborn before the Most High daily. And you know, that's something that I that that I take to heart, and that you know, I work on daily, you know, in this walk that I'm on. So I just wanted to say, you know, that was a you know a better car for me, definitely a blessing, you know. what I'm saying and hearing and you know something that was that's that I may be going through personally, and then to hear it come out within the realm of a, of a brotherly, you know, and fellowship conversation just is, it just lets me know that, you know, I'm on the right path and I'm, I'm, I'm walking with a good group of men. And I just wanted to share that, you know, how that, that struck me and, you know, it was enlightening and, and, and pleasing to experience that. And uh, one thing I wanted to say when we were talking about uh, the lust of the flesh and the women earlier, you know, one of the things that I learned you know, in my walk and being a man that, you know, I've, I've suffered from that, especially when I was in my darkest moments. But when I came out of that, I realized that those of the world love you the most when you're at your worst. So that should be a red flag to any of us, you know what I'm saying? And knowing and understanding that when that world out there loves you to death, it's probably because you living off, you know? You know, when you, when you, your most conceited, when you, your most vain, when you, you know, your most materialistic, that's when them, them, what I call world girls, that's when they love you the most. So that right there lets you know that they leading you to a pit, like one of them, 
like Proverbs, I believe, said, you know, one of the first scriptures you laid out, you know, it's an endless pit, you know, and you just end up poor or end up taking on the judgments of those spirits that you allow to attach to you. So Todar Rabah for the lesson, Aki, you know, I appreciate everybody's, you know, words and involvement. And, you know, I took that all in and hallel yah, hallel yah. Hallelujah. I can't even tell her about for you, even for uh, Jordan, um, and giving your wisdom. You know, I know you are not a man of many words, but tell that y'all for you even joining us and uh, giving us what you give us, Aki. All up. Lord of God, Aki, Lord of God. Uh, you hear me, y'all? Hey, Salam, Moray. Um, it was a great lesson. I loved how you pulled the proverb verse. Um, I was um, thinking earlier, it really, uh, <laughs> it brought to mind for me, the Proverbs verse, it reminds me of um, what I see on Facebook nowadays, how you got these reels that they put on Facebook now and majority of the time, it's a bunch of these reels with, uh, unfortunately, our sisters falling after these trends to these songs or whatever. And it's got them acting all types of ways. And sometimes I don't look at the reels, but I'll see, like, you'll click on the reel, right? And you'll hear the music playing, and I automatically will pause it. I'll be like, this don't match up because our sisters shouldn't be doing this as young as they is. You see it online, but that's the type of mentality that they kind of supporting. And I remember I heard one of the brothers mention that earlier. So all praises that I was in the same line of thought that, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's the type of pattern that they pushing. But all praise to the most high that, you know, you, you know, over time you start to see the spirits more and more nowadays. And that's kind of what I'm starting to see. And it kind of makes me veer off from even looking in that direction for the time being. So all praises to the most high for blessing me with that uh, spirit of self-control as far as that goes. But it was a great lesson. And I enjoyed it. And I enjoy being with you brothers, especially around this time of the year, because you know how it gets. Cause it goes from one season, one seasonal event to the next seasonal event the week after, you know. So it's good to be around y'all brothers because it helps build my spirit up, you know, and reinforcing the fact that, you know, just because I'm not involving myself necessarily with everybody around me doesn't mean that that's a bad thing um it reminds me of when i was reading the verses with enoch in the book of uh Jash, i believe when enoch um he was the king and after he became the king for a while he started to back off after he taught everybody the commandments and he did his job he just started to back off Slowly but surely, he started visiting people once a week, then once a month, then once every three months, then once a year, you know. So um, when it comes to me interacting with people less and less, once I tell people, you know, the word, and if I interact with you slowly, you know, after a while, you know, it's not a bad thing necessarily, you know. Um, I'm thinking about set-apart mentality or whatever, but... Um, yeah, it was a great lesson, you know, in regards to it all. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I hold my peace. Shalom. Okay, hallelujah. Todar uh, Abaki, all praise to the most high. Um, Sha, and then uh, Bayit yourself. Yeah, you know, cool blessing. You know, praise the most high for allowing you to bring out the lesson. I learned a lot, you know. And also, you know, the input from, you know, the Akim on this call, you know, um, I overcame a lot of things. And, you know, but there's still some things I have to move out of the way, you know, with the power of the most high, you know, I could definitely move them out. 
Um, you know, so all praise to Yah. How you? Hallelujah. Hey, we all supposed to be doing this together. Um, by get yourself. Uh, can to her about again for this lesson. I, uh, one of the things I actually was one of my points. One of the things that was also brought out was uh, the dealings of the heart. The first scripture that comes to my mind was in um, uh, Matthew chapter twelve, where it's talking about <clears throat> the treasures, and I'm paraphrasing. Uh, the good treasures, uh, what a good man brings forth is out of the heart, and also the wicked treasures are out of the man's heart as well. And those are the things that you'll be judged upon. So that's one of the <laughs> things that was like, oh man, we're going back to the heart issue again. So it's always a, a reflection for me to always look at my heart and look at the things that I say. I'm very big on. Um, teaching my household about what you say, because it comes from the heart. Ultimately, a lot of people don't really realize that they think it comes from your mind, but no, it really derives from your heart. Those feelings and things of that nature comes from your heart. You will be judging those things uh, in the end of days. So told her about for bringing that out as always. Uh, you clearly see that in the example of uh, uh, Shaul, where he had those inclinations. It, just like my ox said, it sounds like he was trying to do good. And I absolutely agree. Uh, bringing it to like a real perspective, if we were put in that same predicament, myself, I would say myself, right, pointing the finger first, I probably would have been like, dang, Shemuel well taking a little too long for me. These people are getting a little restless. They're starting to drift away. You know, I, you, most people in their right mind would have thought that they were doing the right thing in that implication, but it really does boil back into uh fear or faith, just like how you said it on. So thought I was about for bringing that out. Uh, Cain for my Noriah, <laughs> my, he said he had all cylinders <laughs> on that, uh, on what he said. So thought out for bringing that out. One of the movies that I just watched recently, uh, most brothers probably watched it already, was that new Matrix movie. And one of the things that was brought out in there was um, this world likes to put out a, a bunch of white noise, right? Trying to derail you trying to block you, trying to bog you down in any way, shape, or fashion to where you are disconnected from the creator. Whether it be those uh, YouTube reels, whether it be those Facebook reels, whether it be uh, the coronavirus, social media, all those things are there to try to block you and bog you down. <clears throat> and just like in the movie, what it said was that when you're pulled out of the matrix, you have a lot of white noise being pumped in your head. And the next near thing that makes that same amount of noise was war. So if you look at that, right, the scripture even states that we're not battling flesh and blood. We're fighting, <clears throat> we're fighting a battle of spirits and principalities. So that's a constant war that we're fighting out there. And it's, it can get very noisy. It can get very clouded. It can get very tiresome sometimes. So that's when we have to truly rely on our brothers here uh, every brother on this line i i personally rely on each and every one of y'all because it can get very tiresome uh during this walk so i yield on that thought um and as you were speaking uh in uh adon yermi i was speaking earlier um right before i see him uh more baruch and more kanaki i have anything um <clears throat> Uh, something comes to mind between uh, another parallel between King Melech Shaul and Melech Dawid. Um, you see that this was Melech Shaul in a situation where the people were getting rowdy, but they were beginning they were beginning to be scattered, right? And then you see the parallel when um, Melech Dawid is in the land of the Philistine, and they've taken their wives, their children and so on and so forth. And they actually want to lay hands on Dawi, not just scattering, they want to lay hands on him. And he goes and encourages him, encourages himself and the creator, right? So you still have a situation where one, the people are leaving, and then the other, the people are coming toward you because they want to lay hands on you. So you see the difference between one man putting his faith in his own hands and another man encouraging himself for the creator so you still you always have a choice as 
as men, we're always going to be in a position where our back up, our back is against the wall because that's the way the creator designed it. Because how else would I know once again was in your heart? Unless I put you in a position to where you have no choice but to reveal it. So either you're going to trust me, right? Or you're going to trust in the arm that you have. Or you're going to trust in the arm of the creator. Oh, okay. Always put your trust in Yahuwah. Blesses the man that put his trust in Yah, whose trust is Yah. Hallelujah. Um, uh, Boy Baruch, uh, you have anything to know? No, Aki, uh, told lesson, keep teaching, man. You know what to do, you know. Most high use you, you know, and um, that um, that man with the seven Rukot, um, you know, I would say that that's, that's that man that's in the image and the likeness. That's, that's the way we supposed to be. So, you know, um, the man who's purposed, you know, so, um, yeah, just keep keep going, brother. Toe blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, though. Um, sound like you're a little tired over there, though. I know that's why you ain't really say that. But even in uh, that little bit, you still said something. You said, that's the man in the image and like this, which means that that's really all of us. And you have the head. I'm, I'm going to let you go. You have the head, but then you have the army that's just as strong as the head. So then how do you defeat an army like that? Go ahead and know. You about to say something? No, nah, not now. I'm, I'm going to save it. But, uh, but okay, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to that, man. You said a lot. You know what I'm saying? Even in the little, you said a lot, and it can, it can, it can go uh, – it can go a lot of different ways. It can, well, let me say a lot. What I mean by that is it can go a lot deeper. You know, it's like how deep does the rabbit hole go, right? Um, so it, it's a lot to that, what you said tonight. And um, it's going to come out. It's going to come out in later classes and as we build more and more together. But, yeah, uh, told her about for that. Um, good to hear from you, too, uh, Yermiyahu on the line. I'm gonna call Moray Yermi Yahoo. He don't, he may not want it, but I'm, I'm gonna start calling him that. <laughs> and all you brothers uh, on the line, man, definitely good to be on here with you, with you brothers, man. Dropping insight, knowledge, and wisdom, and understanding as we all learn together. So, told I y'all for it. Oh yeah, praise y'all. <clears throat> uh, yeah, um, um, I know Yermi Yahoo is 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 time, but anyway, um, uh, Moray Kanakia. You told me though. Okay, okay. I'm I'm told, man. Told lesson. Definitely. Um, it's definitely thought provoking in in it causes us to uh be in mindset of living a reflective life because one way that you can always bring yourself into that inner that inward place, <clears throat> like the most high saw in, in, in the leg that we was, you know, constantly taking a look at ourselves, realistic look at ourselves to see what we line up, to see what we miss it at. And to just keep, you know, moving forward to uh, press to be mature in the Father and in our relationship with Him, and it's always indeed a blessing to have our Kim, you know, that's willing to, um, that's that's lined up and willing to share in your life, you know, to keep you on the on the on the uh, right path, you know. Again, iron sharpens iron. So, told lesson. I, I really enjoyed it, and uh, I love all the Akim on here. Thank y'all for allowing me the opportunity to be on here to learn as well. I yield. Hallelujah. Uh, Zoke and Tony, uh, then uh, 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 Zoke and Eli, and then we're going to pray out for the night. I yield. Praise y'all. So not for you uh, attending with us, Adon. Praise y'all. Uh, Adon, Eli. All praises to the Most High, uh, always. Uh, wow, uh, it's just so much been said and so much uh, that we can reflect on, not just this lesson, which was told, very told, but going back to some of the other lessons that were spoken in our hearing. Um, and I just think it's a, 
it's a very high privilege that we have. Can you hear me okay? Okay, okay. It's a very high privilege that we have to to hear these words and to read these words. Um, had a uh, ran into a a, a cote um, yesterday, and she was telling me that uh, there's some some brews out there or a, or a brew that's always trying to get her to come to his come to his house, and he's not putting down the cigarettes and he's telling her he's a brew and uh you know i told her i said if he's not living right according to what the word says don't have anything else to do with it and because this lesson was focused on the matters of the heart we we should uh every morning when we get up collectively uh check ourselves um and then <clears throat> realize like one day this week, I had to realize I had no idea what I was doing in the day. I had no idea why my everything about me was confused. And so when I was in that state, I'm speaking of checking my heart and checking my mind because I felt lost and confused. I said, Father, you have my day. You have my life in your hand. You know why I'm feeling this way. You know why I'm going through this. And when I begin to focus on the most high and I begin to turn my energy over then okay, I'm sorry. Then every day things just begin to just flow extremely well. So as with matters of the heart, let's be very mindful how very precious it is that we can turn these pages and look up these verses because it is making us the light of the world every single time we take time to make time for the word. I yield. Um, yeah. Okay. And that's on all of us. Regardless of what level we at, we got to keep increasing he said the house of Dawid will be like elohim and the most feeble like us will be as the house of elohim which means that there are no weak links hallelujah um so we're gonna go ahead and pray out once again all praises honor and esteem to the creator of all flesh uh, creator of heavens and earth uh, eloha abraham we get Scott, we are cold. Um, <clears throat> so I don't be coughing and stuff doing the tefila. Um, Yermia, uh, Adon, are you in the position to pray us out? Aki. Naftali. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm in a position now, Toraba. Hallelujah. And we all stay in the face of this life. Shout out to pray before the Almighty. Hallelujah. Ya Elohim Ha'olam. Kubore Kho Devarim. Kunu Kayenu. Ha'erif. Ha'yom Shalishi. Torah Roba Bishbo Ahabcha. Torah Roba Bishbo Chastacha. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We Rachamecha. And we thank you for your compassion. To the esteem, the, the Holy One, the highest one. Glory and honor to thy great name forever and ever. We humble ourselves before the O great King of God. And we submit our lives to you. We ask, humbly ask you for strength to continue on to continue to be your servant, to continue to be God-like beings, to continue to be a positive representation of thee here on earth. We ask that you will give us the strength that we need to carry on, to continue on. The battle, the, to win this battle, the spiritual warfare. We pray that you will bless us 
as Anashim, as Devarim, as men, before you, to represent you in the right way, to protect our households, our Nashim, our wives, our Yeladim, and our children. Protect those that may be under our care, knowing that with the strength that you give us, O oh Yah, we can never fail. We can never be defeated. We ask that you will continue to show us the right way, that you will lead us in your path of truth. Allow your light to continue to shine and illuminate within all of us, O oh great King on high. Allow us to stand strong against the darkness, to stand strong against the evil root coat that's out there in this world. Even as you spoke to Gibeon and you told him that you just need a small amount. We know it's about the quality of the people and not the quantity. But we pray that the remnant will be larger than what we can even imagine in our mind, O great King on high. That we'll be singing and rejoicing on our way back to Jerusalem. I pray that you will bless our inner root coat, our inner spirits, that we can stay focused. As Yehoshua mentioned, that we will have chazak with our mats, be strong and very courageous, that we can stand the course, that we do not fall short. And when we do slip before you, O oh Yah, we ask that you will forgive us, that you will correct us and chastise us and measure, but please never utterly destroy us. Once again, bless the Moray for his great words, his teaching, and the spirit that you put upon him. Bless all the brothers on the line, and Brother Nariah, once again, for ushering the prayer before thee this day, and all the men who spoke words of truth this evening, O Yah. We pray that truth will continue to reside in our home, and that evil and wickedness will flee far away from us. May thy enemies be scattered, and those that hate thee flee before thee. Our Father, our Rock, and our, our Redeemer, our King, the power of all powers, the Elohei Abraham, Yitzchak, with Yisrael, Ha'el Shaddai, Ha'el Yom, Blessed by Old Shemo, what ain't old, but Hashemai mi wa'al, wa'alis mi takat, ain't Elohei ki mokai Yehoah, le'olam wa'ed, Barukata, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So that I buy a dome, so that I get into the uh, land.